I know there are certain producers that really work well on their own and can only work on their own. But for me, I work much better. I can work on my own, but I'm really slow. If I'm working with a programmer and, a, and an engineer and a, 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 another producer and bouncing ideas around, I, I really enjoy making music like that and I can finish things really quickly. All my favorite records we've finished in like a day or two days, but it's been like, like that, you know? If I work on my own, it takes me two weeks to finish a record. So, so it, it was made together with Spooky? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, Charlie, D Duncan wasn't involved. D Duncan got involved in the, the second Involver record, actually. What's your usual uh, process like uh, when, you, when you write your music? Like, where do you start? What, what's, what's usually the, the beginning point for you? Uh, if I'm writing songs, I usually start with, um, I have some stock sounds that I use that I really like the balance of. And I, I basically sit there and I write melodies. I work on melodies. I'll spend like two, three weeks just working on writing melodies. And then kind of I'll go back through like 20, 20 different ideas and I'll go back through them and I'll pick out the strong ones and then I'll, I'll, I'll then start to mix those records and change the sounds and, and if I, that's if I'm writing, you know? But it comes, sometimes it comes from different places, you know? Sometimes you just put a little beat together and you're like, this is perfect, I need to build a record around that. But for me personally, I like to find the melodic hook to a record first and then build from there, so. Yeah, I, I've, I've heard a lot of people who say that you're, um your track should, uh, your drums should fit your song, your song shouldn't try to fit your drums. You know, a lot of and I don't know, a lot of music, a lot of club music these days, it's more about the drums than anything, you know. There's very little melody in, the, in a lot of the, you go out and listen to music at DC10 and, you know, Space, Carl's Night, you know, there's, there's, there's not a lot of melod melodic stuff happening in there and it's all about the drums, so. Is that something that, that, you, um, that you like or? Well, I think it, it, a lot of the time when I approach a track, I like to like I like to write a melodic hook, and then maybe extrapolate a club track out of it. Whereas I think a lot of the music that's been made for clubs, it starts with the drums, and, and, and you know, if I was just going to make a club track, I might approach it with, just from the other end, you know. What kind of um, music uh, today uh, gets you excited? Like what, what, uh, what labels and, uh, and, and DJs? And I hate this question because I can never remember the names of anything. <laughs> What about, um, but you're less say, you're melodic have a now, life, right? Sorry? Your style is less melodic now. Less melodic, maybe. A little bit less melodic. A little bit, a little bit more uh, uh, groovy now, I guess. But. May I ask a question? Uh, I was like uh, in, in, the, in the 90s, first time in, in Ibiza, and there were a party running on Sundays called Home. Home. Do you remember? Yeah. And you played there. Yeah. And that became, it's the same people that, it, they, that runs the they changed the name change into the name. We Love. Okay. Yeah, it's the same people it's though, same people. because they used to own Home Nightclub in, uh, in London. Yeah. And I hated the name Home. Yeah. I remember I played for them and I'm like, yeah. Home at, at Space, I was like, this, it's <laughs> Space on Sundays yeah. is the brand. You yeah. don't need, they tried to rebrand it as yeah. Home yeah. and I hated that. So I said, you should change it to We, we Love Space. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And I was coming back with one set of yours was the Sasha John Liquid at home yeah, in space. Right. So I come back and there was also Sunday we sitting together, maybe fucked up, I don't know. <laughs> and listening to that to that set, it was about uh, one hour and twenty minutes. I think uh, for twelve hours all again <laughs> and again and then was like you know huge songs in it, you know, with melodic and uh, a little right. bit trancy, but, right. uh, but on the edge, you know, right. and it will be, I was growing up with them songs, you know, so you start to begin to get a little bit darker in, in now at yeah. this point. Yeah. Is it like uh, the development? I think it's always an. It because of you, you want to go in this direction. I always, now? yeah. I, I never want to. I guess I never wanted to sit still with a, a specific sound. I've yeah. never been. I've never been like a purist. I've never been like I'll only play techno. I'll only play house. Or I've always kind of tried to f kind of let my uh, let my ears lead me. And 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 it's it's sometimes it takes me in different directions. And sometimes I know the people that. Uh, maybe followed me in 97 don't like the new direction but for me I can't sit still I have to keep kind of pushing my sound into different directions and, so, and sometimes I will take risks and sometimes it works amazingly and sometimes I can you know I've had gigs where I've really I've really I've halfway through my set I realize I've lost the crowd and I'm like I, okay I fucked up tonight <laughs> but you know I think that it's it's for me it's always it's always been the challenge is to keep pushing myself into a different place. Otherwise I could, I would have made 10 different copies of Expander and played festival after festival after festival. And I just, 
yeah, I'm always looking, and I'm, I'm much more interested in new sounds than just doing the same thing over yeah. and over and over again, you know, it's just... Um, but your, your roots are coming from the melodic... Uh, I always, I, whenever I hear, I hear a, a beautiful melody in a record, it always, it always uh, pricks my ears, so I always lean to that. But it's very hard to find melodic records these days that aren't cheesy, that, that, yeah. that really work and... You know, so that's the, that's the real challenge for me is to find those records that have a melodic content to them, but that, that don't uh, cheese out. You know. Do you, do you still uh, buy any records at all? Yeah, I still buy a lot of vinyl. Actually, a few websites I buy from. You know, I love Boomcat and uh, a couple of other places that I still buy vinyl from. But I rip them. I, it, it, it gets played once, recorded, and goes into storage, and um, everything's everything gets ripped so that I can play it through record box. I do miss the days of of, of, of playing vinyl, but. It, I don't know, the, the, the pace with which music comes out these days and the amount of music that only comes out on digital format is... Uh, uh, I think if I lived in Berlin, it may be different. If I had access to a record shop where I was getting these exclusive vinyls all the time, it might be different, but, um, you know, um, yeah, it's so just... So we're not expecting a, a Sasha all vinyl set? I don't think that would happen in a long time, actually. <laughs> It's really nice, actually. The, the program itself, I hate, and with a passion. And I've told Pioneer about this, and there's many things about it that I don't like. But the way that the way that it works, I mean, there's just so many things about it that are, that are archaic. It, it seems to me like a PC program that was translated into a Mac, and it's there's, there's certain things that are lost in translation, and certain things that it doesn't do, uh, which which really bother me. <laughs> but um, it's a very simple way of working. You just plug your computer. I mean, you can use um, you can use USB sticks uh, and have two CDJs just connected together with an Ethernet yeah. cable. But the way that I use it is that I use uh, four, three or four decks uh, connected to an Ethernet hub, and then the hub is connected to the laptop, and then you can access all your music on your laptop. And it it treats your laptop like it's a a, 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 a drive. Where does the record box come in? It just it just runs. You have to import stuff into Recordbox in order for 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 the for the, the CDJs to read it properly. Yeah. You know, uh, and then everything's quantized. Like if you hit the loop button, everything's quantized, and the effects can be quantized as well on the, on the DJM 900. It's a nice setup. That that mixer's not the best sounding mixer. I love the Zone 92. I think that's the best sounding mixer. And it's an analog mixer. It's a beautiful sounding mixer. But functionality-wise, the the 900, the, the Pioneer 900 is fantastic. You know, especially the way that it works with the new FX machine, the the Remix 1000, which is really a really fun machine to use the as Nexus well. The Nexus 900. The Nexus 900 and the Remix 1000. Yeah. It's, that's a really fun setup to use. You know. Yeah. So um, heading back to uh, Ibiza for a moment. Uh, um, sorry, sorry. sorry uh, about like, uh, do you try to play up or uh, I have for you just play? Do you, do you try to get the best quality digitally or? No, I just, I stick with MP3s to be honest, just because it's, uh, I have to download so much music every week and when I'm on the road, at hotel, uh, I tried to do it for a while with AFFs and it would take me three days to download, you know, from Beatport or something, you know, because the, because the, the, the internet speeds are so slow and also the space on my uh, hard drive. So. I do everything with MP3s, which I know I, I have everything recorded as AFF, but then I, I bounce it to uh, to MP3 just because it's easier to to, uh, to use. I know the sound quality isn't as good as it should be. Do you realize but like, but did you try like if, if big clubs? Is there a difference? Like, absolutely, yeah, 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 you can hear it. But okay. yeah, I did especially when I go to like a really nice sound system. I will do. I'll, I'll always do that. Um, the thing as well is that the thing about MP4s, I was using MP4s for a while, they actually sound louder than AFFs, but they don't have the depth of the sound. Um, but the thing is, if you're going to a, a really good club with all this amazing processing and going on after the DJ booth, you know, the, the difference is, is, not so, is not so massive. You can tell it, if you listen to a whole set, if you listen to the same track on an AFFF and MP3, you can tell the difference. But if you're hearing a whole set on MP3, you can't really tell the difference, I think, you know, because there's so much high-end processing going on. When you go to a club like Womb or Space, or there is so much high-end processing going on after the DJ booth that it's uh, it's not so important. It's only sometimes when you play on a, a not so good sound system, you can really hear the, the difference. You know. What can't you say about uh, high-end processing? 
processing? What kind of processing would this be for the guys? Well, just the compression and the crossovers and the way the sounds split up after the DJ booth. You know, there's some really expensive shit happening after the booth, you know. So when you see those banks of amplifiers and crossovers and, com and compressors and limiters and stuff that go on after the booth, that stuff really just, it, it splits the sound apart and boosts it in so many ways that the difference isn't so bad. When you play on a system that isn't so good, then you can really hear the difference. But then, it, then also it doesn't matter so much. <laughs> so, um, again, what I was saying before, going back to Ibiza for a moment, um, um, you've, you've You've been coming here for a long time, and um, we want to. Uh, uh, I just want to know what, what your your highlights have been in terms of the residences. What what have been in your mind some of the best nights, maybe like three of the best nights um, uh, over the last twenty years. Well, I mean the rate that. The when we did the Radio 1 show here, the first Radio 1 broadcast from Ibiza, well, that? that was 93, I think. That was a real moment. Like I said, it was. Uh, it really felt like dance music had got this suddenly got this global thing to it. It had been something that had been massive in England, you know, the scene, but it's, it suddenly exploded to Ibiza and it felt like being broadcast on Radio 1, it felt like it was going to the world and that was a really big moment. Was there one particular event of, of around that time when, uh, it was, when you felt that it was like, like, like a certain lineup with certain DJs or was it just like the general vibe of the summer? Or? It was just the general vibe of the summer, but I mean that particular gig at Amnesia was, yeah. was really amazing. Um, and then, you know, probably my residency, the year I did the residency at, um, at, at home, a bit, uh, at Space on Sunday. I had some really monumental nights that summer. Um, and then, you know, more recently, I think, you know, obviously the opening of Ashwire and, you know, playing at Ashwire, the, our closing party at Ashwire last year at the big place uh, was amazing. But then also the year before when we did the beach bar, uh, which is now La Plage, uh, the closing party in September for that was really a special for me. That, for me, that summer was a real summer of transition for me because um, I kind of went from um, actually got to January and I had no gigs booked in Ibiza, and I was like, "What's going on?" You know, it's like this, I, you know there was a big change happening in Ibiza that year, or a lot of the more commercial things were happening, and I didn't have any gigs in place, and I was like, "What am I going to do?" And I like, I can't go through a summer without playing in Ibiza, so we decided to do a free event at La Plage every Thursday and uh, and we just went ahead and did that you know um, funnily enough once we kind of confirmed to do that for the summer I literally had all these offers coming of all these other gigs it's just like everything came in really really late uh, that year um, but then you know we did this summer and, and, and playing at La Plage that year was a it was the first time I'd been playing in Ibiza but not playing in this huge room with, and being on this big lineup and being all this pressure on doing the main slot um, you know, I'd start DJing quite early and, you know, I'd play with the sunset and then play, you know, for maybe for three hours, four hours. Um, and, and, you know, it finished early and, it, you know, we start our first party, I think we had 400 people there. We didn't advertise it. The guy, they, they'd had problems with a, a big Luciano party with the police. So they, uh, they were like, you can't advertise anything. We just got to do everything word of mouth. So we start, started off with 400 people at that, at that place. And because of that, I started playing records that I just, I, for me, I, I wanted to play perfect Ibiza beach music, you know? Yeah. So I started digging into my record box and finding all these beautiful records that I'd never get a chance to play out unless if someone was coming back to my house for an after party or something. Um, so I started building my set around this sound and it kind of developed. And then, the, you know, the next week we had 600 people and by our closing party, we had like 1,500, uh, 2,000 people there. And, but I was playing this kind of really kind of pretty beach sound that I kind of cultivated that year. And for me, that was, you know, to get through the summer and build a night around a new sound for me, that was a really, you know, it wasn't something that I could play anywhere else. It didn't translate. I tried to do it in a couple of other clubs and it just didn't work. You know, it's just, it, it kind of, it was just spe specific for this venue and for, the, for that summer. And um, for me, that was a real achievement to do that, to be able to build a, a night around this kind of really kind of bouncy, pretty sound that I do. What, what, were, you, what were your, you set, your set times around this time? You say it was like, was this like when the sun was going down? Like, yeah, around or, yeah, nine till midnight or something. Nine you know, yeah, they, they closed at midnight, so it was like nine till midnight, or you know. It's a different setup, isn't it? Like you could have people who come and see like you, and then maybe move on to somewhere else. Later right. On. Oh, sometimes I'd actually play early. I'd play like five till seven, and then let the guests go on, and then you know, and then at five till seven, I'd play proper like you know, a beat, you know, chill, you know, some chill music in there. But um, yeah, 
I just really enjoyed it, you know, it, it, it was... Is it the other Sasha that you have always in you, the place from 7 till 12? <laughs> <laughs> is it like, you know, is it the records like you told you have to go, go back to your house and play on your own after party if you want? Well, to, to be honest, having a gig like that every year to do, it, it, it allows you to release that stuff, you know, to get it out of your system, you know. <laughs> it allows me to get that out of my system so that I could go to the other gigs and if I'm playing a big main room, I can just, you know, I play hard and I don't have to try and get that sound in there at all, you know, by having, uh, by having that release there, being able to do, it was a very self-indulgent set, you know, it was very something like, you know, follow me or fuck off, you know, I wasn't, I didn't, I didn't care about that, it was like, this is what I'm going to do here and I wasn't, uh, and because it kind of because because the party built really slowly, it wasn't like my first gig. There was two thousand people there expecting anything, you know. Um, so it was a really nice way to build a, a season. It was a really fantastic year for that. Ashwaya, this year is very different, you know. It's the first party. We had almost three thousand people there, and there it's a big room. It's a big sound system. The stage is fantastic. The stage is amazing. The production is amazing. But you've got to deliver a sound there. You've got to you've got to deliver, you know. So. It's a very different, very different scenario to two years ago, and I do miss. I, I definitely miss having that kind of gig uh, uh, every week in the summer. It was a really nice. It was like I got to play all my favorite records and all, get this thing out of my system. You know? What kind of records would, would like you say? Like you know, like let's say for example we had like a sun, like for example Gabo uh, play, played last night and did a sunset uh, set, which was like which was great for us all to watch. Um, like what? What kind of records would you be pulling out your record bag on, like at a sunset? Um, I mean, that year I was, you know, I had like I was playing like uh, XX record, Beach House. Eighties uh, stuff, nineties. No, it was it was all new music, but it was all new music, but it was all very pretty kind of melodic stuff, you know. And um, yeah, my my set from the closing party is actually on on my SoundCloud page actually, and it's the one with the most hits. I think it's the it's the one I get had the most feedback from because it. No, no, it's uh, that was last year. It was it was two years ago. So, um, yeah, I, yeah. I, I recently read a, a well, listened to um, an interview. I don't know you, you know uh, the R. H. James podcast. Yes. Um, it was I think it was uh, Joseph who was interviewed. He, he talked about you quite a lot. Oh yeah. Said, uh, well, it was all it was all. Um, he just basically um, really really infused um, about how you kind of. Um, got him into supporting you on a lot of occasions recently. Um, yeah, I've been playing a lot of his tracks and he, he, he yeah. played with me at the uh, Renaissance parties as well. Yeah. Uh, the it, it just seems like it fits quite well with like, I mean, I've, I know quite a bit of Joseph's music and like it, it's, a lot of it is quite quite slow tempo disco, but a lot of it is a bit harder as well. Yeah. Like really, really interesting. Yeah, he was, he's, he's great. I like to, I like to, I like, yeah, was, I like was what it, he plays. Um, these uh, summer parties that like influenced that at all, like, you know, the, the, the slow music when you're playing some of his kind of like, slower edits at this point or you know, what's your relationship with him uh, like at the moment? Um, yeah I mean that, that summer I was definitely dropping some of his tracks I think that's kind of where the connection came from right. and then and then last year we booked him to play you know a couple of a couple of really great parties with us um, there are so many great producers like that though yeah. it's just it's 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 an amazing time actually for music I think it's a, re a really revolutionary time for dance music there's so many people producing music um, who else are you looking at booking like, uh, to play with you at the moment who's really impressing you? Um, and what do you look My for really? My brain goes like, dead whenever anyone, anyone answers, <laughs> asks me that question. I have to have my computer in front of me. <laughs> well, like, are you, um, I mean, like, what, you know, what parties have you played recently where you've seen a DJ who really impressed you? Or, or what do you look for in a, in a good DJ? What is a good DJ? What is a good DJ? <laughs> that's the that's the big question, isn't it? Yeah, right, yeah, okay, okay. Um, Nowadays, yeah, <laughs> especially. Who have been your favorite DJs over the years? Like, you know, like who else have you seen? Or new upcoming. The people that I like to go out and listen to are people that kind of definitely play kind of more left field music. I mean, it's you know, I, I went to 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 Geta last night at Ushuaia and he's playing these gigantic records, and it, you know, to see the crowd go mental like that is always fun, but. It's not the kind of music I want to listen to for more than an hour or even half an hour, to be honest. You know, um, if I want to go out and listen to music, my, I mean, my favorite DJ is probably Lee Burridge, who plays these kind of monumental eight hour sets, but it's, it's almost like dub house music. I love Cassie. 
Uh, DJ3 from New York uh, is one of my favorite DJs, Milo. He's an old friend of mine. But he's one of those DJs that always pulls records out that really surprise me and just, I, n I never know any of his records. And half the time I'll ask him what a record is and he's like, oh, this is 10 years old. You know, he's always looking back into his collection and digging things out and re-editing stuff. Um, you know, uh, upcoming, upcoming new talents, like, I don't know, in the past two years or something have like Have you that. noticed anybody yeah. who... Well, I think Scuba's really uh, having a massive year. You know, I really supported his records last year, and this year he seems to be, you know, really, really smashing it. I mean, James Abila is kind of yeah, one of my... Still. Yeah, he's just, you know, every time I see him play, he puts a smile on my face. I mean, I, I don't know anyone that has the kind, same kind of energy uh, behind their DJ sets is what he does. Um, time I heard they, James Teach is also somebody that I've been kind of uh, supporting recently. We made a track together and uh, he's just started doing some uh, supporting sets for me. He played with me in, uh, in LA and New York on my last tour and just played brilliantly. I, we've, I played Fabric with him as well. And I think he's going to do really, really well. Um, he's coming. He's coming up, and his his performance is really cool because he'll get on the mic and sing things, and it's all part of. He'll have his move there, and he'll be playing synth lines, and it's a really, it's a really cool sound. Like what he's doing. Do. <laughs> well, I never played live keyboards. <laughs> no. I want to ask you something. I want to ask you the same question I asked Carl Craig this morning. Uh, you have all this history behind you, and uh, you, you've been in the music industry for a few <coughs> years now, and uh, yeah. you're, you're a very important figure in the, in the history of electronic music. <coughs> Considering this, uh, what do you think about electronic music now, and uh, <coughs> if the direction uh, which, is, which is all going to, uh, is, it, is, it, is it a good direction or, or a bad one? The, the whole music thing, the whole electronic music thing, the production. What, what are, you, are you talking about how commercial it's got? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, commercial, underground, good or bad music. Is it, I think is it that, going that, for the better or the, for the worse? Well, there's some terrible music being played at some of the commercial clubs and they'll play things over and over again. And, and it's very hard to kind of say when you hear somebody just playing an hour set of just big commercial hits and then you you compare that to say Luciano playing for six hours to say they're both DJ sets is, is very hard to do but you know some of the new uh, uh, some of the new DJs that have come through in the last couple of years are, are pop stars you know and they glow it's not it, the same sort of thing happened in the UK in the 90s but the music was just just to just uh, limited to the UK you know a lot of DJs then had I had a top 10 record you know a lot of DJs had top 10 records then but it was just limited to the UK. What's happening now, it's a global thing. Yeah. You know, these records, Calvin Harris and Rihanna, that record was just gigantic, you know, big, one of the biggest records ever, you know, and uh, it's, a, it's become a global thing and, and it's driven by the DJs. It's very hard to equate that, though, with kind of the underground. It's, they're two very different things, but even if just 10% of the people that are buying those Rihanna records get bored of that sound and come to the underground, it's going to keep the underground really, really healthy, you know? And I think it's already started to happen. Any of these kind of big pop explosions, it's called pop for a reason, because it pops and, it's, it, and it ends, and, it, and it, will, it will go out of fashion, you know? And, but I think the underground will always be there, you know? It, yeah, the underground will always be there, and I think that that's kind of the... What is that? I did, there are definitely certain venues around the world that I used to play at where they were really into the underground sound where now uh, it, you can tell it, that, that venue's been, it, they're just booking commercial acts and they don't get the underground music anymore. And that's sad, you know, there's certain places. But then there are other places where it's still really, really thriving. I think Ibiza is the perfect example of the, of the right balance, you know. You can go to David Guetta last night and then go to DC 10 straight afterwards <laughs> and get your mind blown in both two different ways, you know? And I think it's the, it's the, it's the perfect balance of ether, you know? And I think the underground here is still really, really strong and healthy. I think the underground drives everything. It's what keeps people probably sane, actually. If every club was playing that commercial music, it would just get very boring very quickly and very, very dull. So how do you uh, keep the tension in the crowd when you okay. had residences around here? With the tunes, every week new tunes, you present new music. Sometimes, crowd, so, yeah, a lot of new music, but then yeah. also find maybe every, every summer I'll find three or four records that I kind of, I make, history, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, maybe older records. 
they're usually records that maybe came out six months or a year ago that yeah. everyone missed. Or you know, I maybe played them and then or you went played them two times and, and then, then went forgot. exactly, and then I went back to them and I'm like, this is an anthem. Someone needs to make an anthem out of this. You know, because when you're when you're constantly kind of getting new music, it's very easy to to miss to maybe play something a couple of times and then then forget it because you're constantly trying to keep your record box fresh. What I found in every summer in Ibiza, I'll find three or four records that become my anthems for the summer. And over the summer, you know, uh, they become bigger and bigger in my set. And, they, you know, they might start off at the beginning of my set. And then by the end of this, in September, I'm playing them as an encore record, you know, and they become, and it's always, you know, that's the challenge each year is to find those, find those records. But on these nights, did you play at the beginning or the end or the prime time? Or How do you mean? Um, when, the, when your residency happened? Did you open the night, close the night, or play it more or less the prime time? Um, well, with the Ushuaia residencies, I always play the last section. But yes. at Space on Sundays, I was I would I would always play like around two in the morning, like like the so peak. Of course, you adapted. Uh, yeah, and you know, going on in the main room at Space at two a.m., you've really got to kind of yes, you've, you've, you've got, got to, to give it something. You have to deliver. Uh, yeah, you got to deliver. You can't fanny around with a ten-minute intro. Yeah. You know, it's like. <laughs> You've got to deliver straight away. Uh, it's a different mentality to maybe playing at the, on the beach. <laughs> but I think you all did deliver at last. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, you know, the, the person I really liked at the space opening was uh, Una, the, the Spanish yeah. guy. He's yeah. fantastic. I loved his set at the opening of space. We booked him to play uh, Ushuaia because of that set. He was, he was really good. He also, Lola was excellent. Lola was great as well. Yeah. Tech, he, no more tech. yeah, yeah. But you have to, you know, if you're playing inside, room at space you have to play techno there you can't really <laughs> do anything else <laughs> how do you feel uh, the club nights would be for like the big residencies like your your spendings and your riches like the world like how do you think they um, uh, that they, they get on over the course of time like is it like you know is it a very like harmonious relationship between uh, yeah, I think it is. Unless you're on the same night as someone else, then yeah. then then you obviously got a, b a battle on your hands. But it seems that people people have picked the nights to to you know yeah, yeah you know like Richie's on Thursday night. There's nothing else really techno on, on a Thursday night. If Richie had gone on a Monday yeah. up against Cocoon, then that would have been war, <laughs> you know. But I think you know, and like no one would go up against Carl on Tuesday. It's, it would be it would be it would be psycho to do that, you know. And I got offered a Sunday uh, this year, and I was like, "There's no way I want to take on uh, We Love on Sundays." So we we, ch we picked a Friday, um, and it's an early evening thing as well. So the only other things on Friday this year, I mean, it's obviously it's Pete Tong's thing, but I think th those those two things can work work together, you know. Um, but there's not much room left actually. But this year there's been so many new nights launched. But I think all it seems to me this year all the gaps have been filled in. You know, last year there was some gaps and there was a lot of things, it seemed to be like a lot of things on Fridays and only one thing on, there was nothing on Thursdays and Wednesdays and this year everything seems to have kind of slotted into place, you know. And this is better for the consumer, isn't it? For the yeah, you've got every night, you've got perfect choice, I think, you know, every night there's something to do. But you maybe notice through the years that every day of the week has his own sound on Ibiza, or not? Yeah, it's not so much that now because I think there's so many new nights launched. Yeah, I mean, yeah. this this got everything, huh? Every actually day. this year Thursday seems a little congested because you've got Richie, you've got Luciano at Shwire, Richie at Space, and Jamie Jones at DC10. That seems quite. We did get offered a Thursday as well. I'm really glad we didn't take it actually because yeah. I think there's a lot of congestion on that night. Four on yeah. Thursday. Yeah. Can I ask you something? Uh, are you you are a big artist and? Uh, you obviously have people around you working with you. Yeah. Are, are they proposing you to, pop, to do pop uh, tracks and go into that? Uh, I did that in the 90s, you know. Yeah. I, I had a top 10 single in the 90s in England. I did vocal tracks and stuff, but it's something that I wasn't very good at, you know. That, okay. that record, even though it did well, I didn't, it wasn't very good. <laughs> You know, everything seems to be getting in the charts back then. You know, if you, if you if if a DJ put his name on a record, it would hit the charts. You know, but it's, um, it's, it's driven by you, or is it driven by? It's driven by me. Yeah, it's yeah. driven by me. You know, and so I've definitely taken it. it yeah, I've definitely action. taken it. I, I'm I'm sure I could have been much more commercially successful over the years if I had gone a more pop route and if I'd gone kind of into producing more pop records or write, working with vocals a lot more, but. <coughs> I don't know. I was always drawn to my DJ. My DJ career is always what's driven everything, and 
kind of playing those longer sets and after hours clubs and stuff is really kind of, I feel that's where my heart and soul is and that's kind of driven everything for me really.